All right, cool. We're recording now, so you know, to begin with, we can just decide we're going to keep this private, and then at the end, if we want to make any or all of it public, we can agree to that. Otherwise, it'll stay private. You can have it all public. My whole life is public. I don't care about nothing. Let's go. Awesome. All right, this will be our public video. Cool, man. It's great to connect with you. I mean, wow. Yay. Coming back around again. It seems like every few years, we come back into each other's orbit, right? Yeah, that's how it works. Every time you go up another level, you have to recycle the platter and then you go learn new lessons, you come back and share, and then you depart and come back like newbies. I, I love how every time we come back together, we're both in these different places and we oh, really, really appreciate you where you're at. Places. You got one of these yet? No, I do not have one of those yet. Yo, you like, don't even understand what you're missing yet. Holy shit. Oh my God, crazy uh, shit. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, Next thank level. You. Thank, wow. Thank you for letting me know. I wasn't even aware I was missing out. Oh, you don't, do you know what NFTs are? I do. I do. I'm, you know, on a very basic level, not, not certainly anywhere near where, like, I would be, you know, operating with them. They're just, they're outside of my orbit as a, something I, I, I kind of know about, you know? You're not making millions of dollars right now with NFT. I'm not making millions of dollars. But you're missing out, man! You gotta get on the train! It's leaving the station! Well, that's why we're connecting, bro. I'm, I'm catching up. And, and, and vice versa, man, you know, and that's why I'm excited that we're connecting because, you know, the, the stuff I've been working on for years, you and I have only talked about like little bits and pieces here because I had a real epiphany just within the last few weeks where I decided that all of the intellectual property that I've been coveting and locking behind non-disclosure agreements and then still even not sharing with people I have NDAs with, you know, all the details, I decided just within the last few weeks to, to put it all out into the public domain to just open source. Yeah, but whole... NFT it. <laughs> I haven't NFT'd it. No, this is what you do. You NFT it and then you share it and then people can buy it and own it and access it and you have different tiers and different levels. Okay, great. That's awesome. Th thank you for sharing that. And that's exactly the point is because right now I'm at the point where we've been incubating everything, all these interns I've been working with. I don't remember, you know, which parts I share. Did you get to watch any of the videos on the webpage? I haven't stopped to sleep, let alone eat or watch anything, dude. I got 100,000 emails unread, 2,000 text messages. It's insane. I just... I, I, I was in VR and I saw the time. I'm like, damn, I got to leave, guys. I got to go. We're now doing collaboration whiteboard sessions with a virtual office. And we have like photorealistic avatars so people can actually see you interacting in, a, in an environment next level stuff. It's so awesome, bro. I'm so excited that you're bringing all that to me and to Uniting for Action. That's kind of the point right now is that, like I said, I've been incubating with like 40 graduate and undergraduate students that have been interns over the last year. So semester after semester, they've turned over and we've had about 10 to 15 throughout the year. I've been creating this, you know, grounded reality for all of the, well, not even all the concepts because most of them were still under lock and key, but now that I'm putting it all out there, now what we're doing is we're gathering up the first 50 people like yourself who will create the leadership council, which will be the interface to the rest of the world. And basically everything you're saying, not only are you like saying it to me and what Uniting for Action should do, but you are holding that energy for, you know, like you're saying, the, 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 the whole world getting that. Because I, I totally get everything that you're saying about like, you know, NFTs being, you know, the domain, the next frontier, all of that. And you will see, you know, as you start to absorb what I'm sharing, the framework, the membership organization, all the pieces working together that I have really drilled down to the systems that we need to transform our society at scale, you know, like climate, pollution, deforestation, all the, you know, huge issues that have been beyond our ability to wrap our arms around. I'm creating an optimized system that allows us to optimize the use of our resources globally. And I'll show you, you know, whatever details you want to get into it today. But basically, you know, if you want to, you know, help be the interface of this into the world, this, essentially it's almost like the founding fathers, right? It's the people that are starting to start share it with their networks, to start being a part of it, connect with others. We're basically taking this collective group that wants to commit to working together collectively 
pooling our collective resources. You know, it's funny because I was just thinking as we were preparing, very similar to the chat group that you created, right? And WhatsApp, it's like you set this intention, like, hey, here's 50 or 100 people or how many of you put in the chat, you're like, you guys can create the world together, you know, connect and do it, you know? And now what we're doing is essentially taking that energy and connecting it with this framework, you know, with all these different breakthrough aspects that I've been working on for all these years. Again, I'll show you certain parts of it today. You'll get more over time, but I just want to give you the quick overview so you understand what I'm showing up with and what the opportunity is for you and what we can figure out if you want to be a part of this or not. Do you know what a DAO is? Yeah, you sent it to me like two or three other people have been sending it to me as I've been sharing all of this. So it seems like that's definitely one of the solutions to go forward with. And I think it's going to be whoever is sitting on that team perhaps you, perhaps other people, whatever it looks like. But that's kind of where, again, this whole enterprise for all these years, I've been the bottleneck. I'm taking myself out of the equation. I'm putting it all out into the public domain. I'm creating, like you're saying, a DAO system before we have the actual DAO token and all of that. But we're using the system to be able to have a team assembled to decide, you know, what is the DAO going to look like? What are the governance rules going to be? What's all of the, you know, different details of the DAO? It's not for me to figure out. It's for our team to about everything about the project. And that's where we are with it. That's pretty much what a DAO is. is your, exactly. Exactly. Utilizing it and giving voting rights. However, if you're doing it on the Ethereum blockchain, they need to have bank. And if they don't have bank, then their vote doesn't count. And only the people who have the money actually can control it. So finding a chain that you can use that's cost effective for the voting to happen. And if you align yourself with good people, you can actually make great change. Yeah. And and again, I'm I'm quite certain that we will have a DAO solution. The way that I'm seeing the world in general right now is, you know, I believe in the competition of ideas so that we can see, you know, which ones are winning in the competition. So I think for all general solutions, this is a generality, but I'm just giving my opinion. I want the rest of the world to tell me that we should have at least like two to four different competing solutions so that we can see how they compete and we can see which ones have advantages and that sort of thing and constantly been, be innovating rather than say, the one solution is the DAO, we're creating the DAO, we're doing everything through a DAO structure. I think we'll do a lot through a DAO structure and then we'll also do a lot through some other kind of structures, you know, that'll compete type of thing. So again, but those are just ideas. I wanna throw those ideas into the marketplace of ideas, like you're saying a DAO will do and allow the, the solutions to get generated from that. So that's-, so that's you know, be aware mm -hmm. of, is it's an actual legal entity like an LLC or an S Corp, it's just another container. So. Right, exactly, exactly. So that's why I'm saying that we will have a DAO container and we will still have a LLC container and we'll have, you know, maybe a third container, I don't know what it's going to be, but, you know, we'll have these different containers that are all implementing versions of the solution, you know, as, as an example, but that's the thing, I don't want to decide what the way it's going to be. And that's the purpose of a DAO, right? It's to the, for the group to decide. But also, like you're saying, there needs to be like certain voting rights associated with certain things and the weightingness, the weighting of all of that and how it's associated with, you know, crypt, you know, the possession of crypto or a wallet or whatever, like you're just saying, all of that is not for me to figure out in advance and then tell people we have a DAO with these terms. It's for the people that, you know, think that this is the right solution to talk it out and come up with whatever, you know, the options are and all of that, you know. So that's kind of the way that I see it, the DAO process to create the DAO, right? Are you experimenting at all with blockchain or you're not really even involved with blockchain? Not, yet? not yet, but that's where we want to bring that in immediately. We want to start having that whole team develop, you know, immediately. But even yeah. your solutions could be stored through the blockchain to create order and structure. It's just a, another layer of an immutable ledger. Yeah, I'm very interested in all of those things. I want to start to have a whole team of interns that are working on that. We could have dozens of interns working on that. I don't know if you've gone that route, but that's part of you know where I want to go with this is that you know if you are being a part of this, especially if you're on the leadership council, that you're essentially you know, writing job postings and ways that we're, you know, building not only, you know, interns, but also people in the world that are growing the team. And again, I'm sure you're doing certain things like that already. I just want to kind of, you know, help bring this whole world and us to see how we can synergize our energies and, you know, see what we can create together.
Okay, so what we got, what are we looking at? Yeah, let me show you the beginning structures. Hold on a second. I was just signing up on your thing and going in here. So I haven't even gone into Discord. This is gonna be my first time. So you've never been in Discord before? I haven't been in Discord before, nope. The craziest thing is, is the NFT community completely adopted the NFTs and Discord. So Discord is where communities gather and that's where they're deploying like these crazy con. Like if you're not used to it, the first thing you need to do is shut off the notification bell because you're just gonna hear it's going to drive you mad and then turn off dms from servers so you don't get spammed by a bunch of spam bots but what's cool about it is it's it's collecting a group of like-minded people who participate in a specific project and let's just say you have an nft it could be a piece of art it could be a video it could be a picture but imagine having the unlockable content be access to your discord so only the collectors of your project or the people who actually are token holders have access to the different chats. So you're gatekeeping different conversations based on what they own as assets. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. And again, I can, I can see, you know, I can see that whole structure definitely being a part of what we're doing. Um, I just learned this too, and I think this will help you. Web one was like a digital newspaper. It was right. just text and pictures. It scrolls up and down. Web two was read, write. So right. that means you can read and interact with it with text and input. Now web three is going to be read, write, own. And that's where NFTs come into place. That's ownership of digital assets and others to show prominence. So if you look at like little kids that are playing Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, they're buying skins. They don't understand money. They don't understand anything. They want to flex in front of their friends and be like, yo, look what I got. So now these, these assets are becoming like digital Rolexes where they're putting a, a, a serial number of what item they own in their wallet and they're putting it on your Twitter bio to be like, yo, look, I'm a baller. It's crazy. Yeah, I hear, I hear what you're saying. And I'm very interested in, you know, being a part of all of that as much as we should. You know, and that's where people like you are, are helping us sort through all of that. So it's really, let me, let me go back into what I was just going to share with you so you can get the general structure. Where are you living now? I'm in South Florida still. Are you still in New York or where are you at? I'm in Connecticut, but we're coming to um, our Basel. Nice. We got a, a yacht activation. We're working with a whole bunch of different talent and crazy event space. So maybe I'll catch up with you when I'm down there. Yeah, that sounds amazing. What uh, what are your dates down here so we can try to coordinate? November 29th through uh, December 6th. Nice. Yeah, let's definitely see what we can do to coordinate. Let me make a note. You're doing it with the NFT stuff. Yeah, it's the only thing that matters right now. Like the whole world's blown up. I hear you. Well, I, it's to the point where my lawyer called me up and told me I have to go look at property in Puerto Rico so I don't lose half of my portfolio for taxes. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, so this is like the, this framework. The framework is that we are addressing all issues so you know you know going back in our history you know that i'm here on the planet to support a transition to sustainability so you know that i've been working on how do we systematically you know using my aerospace engineering background how do we systematically address climate and deforestation and pollution and on and on and on and on and um you know because we can systematically address all of them so what that looks like is it looks like identifying all of the issues in advance, developing our resource pool, our resource pool of pledged resources include nonprofits, foundations, corporations, experts, individuals. These are all the entities that are interested in collect and creating a collective solution. Because as you know, here's the challenge with our society right now. Right now, the solution that we rely on to address all of our challenges is the nonprofit world, right? Like, let's just use climate as an example. We've got tens of thousands of nonprofits that are devoted to, you know, climate issues, right? 
And almost all of those organizations are competing against the organization to the right and to the left for their donor dollars and their corporate support and their media attention. Like every single nonprofit has to compete against other nonprofits to exist, right? And in that competitive environment, like they, like metaphorically, they can each build like one, a one or two story building. But when you need a thousand story building to address the solution, like we do for these big issues, and it doesn't matter how many years or hundreds of years you spend building one or two story buildings, but when the collective comes together and pools the resources, then they can build a thousand story building. So we're creating that alternative. We're creating the collective strategic solution by having some percentage of, the, of what's out there in the status quo. It could be very small percent could be one or two percent that say we want to you know create a collective solution so creating the collective solution means identifying the pooled resources then bringing in the experts you know the ones that have been working for years and decades to understand all of this the professors and the nonprofits that are experts and all that and the experts work with the strategic planners and the strategic engineering solutions and they come together to create comprehensive collective strategic plans that compete against each other so say there's like 10 different proposals then you as one of the pledge pledgers of support so let's say that you're putting $100 a month into the collective pool of resources and you want 50% to go to climate, you want 25% to go to clean water and you want 25% to go to social justice. So your $50 a month to climate, you get to say this solution I would give all 50 to, uh, this solution I would only give 25 a month to, this solution I don't wanna pledge anything to, I don't wanna give anything to this one. So basically the, the winners are the ones that are fully pledged by the pool of resources. So the ones that are fully pledged by the pool of resources that includes the nonprofits and the foundations, the corporations, the experts, the individuals, those are the ones that get implemented and those are the ones out there in the world. Then we have the, the uh, project management of all of that. And the thing is, is that right now in our society, we have millions of people that care about all kinds of issues. And right now they have no way to give their collective energy to create any kind of results. So part of what we're doing is we're, we're creating this whole nano action system where you take the projects, you break it down into you know, actions, sub actions, sub actions down to the nano actions that are actions that you can take five minutes at a time, even 20 seconds at a time sitting in line. Like you could look up you know, NFTs, you could grab an article, you could paste it into our system and in the 10 to 20 seconds that you did something, you're actually building out the database collectively with everyone else. So we're tapping into millions of hours of untapped potential human resources along with all the finances and we're bringing it into the collective pool of resources to create strategic solutions for all of our challenges. So that framework is the framework that we're bringing to the world. And we're also being a membership organization of the individuals that wanna to work together, individuals, corporations, foundations, that want to work together within some framework like this, because even the framework competes the solution. So even this whole solution I'm describing to you is just one perspective solution that within the framework would compete against other solutions. But the idea is the framework is getting evolved to be able to provide optimum solutions for our society with the optimum use of our resources. So in a nutshell, that's what we're doing is we're bringing together all the people that want to work together to create collective solutions, creating a framework that's optimizing the use of all of those resources and just continuing to expand out as people see like the results we're creating and more and more people want to join and be a part of creating collective solutions. So that's what we're creating. And if you, you know, appreciate that enough that you want to help lead that into the world, then, you know, that's your opportunity right now. How many hours do you guys been be putting this together? The in terms of the commitment that we're asking of the leadership council, we're asking for people to attend two meetings a month, the first and the third Thursdays from eight to nine p.m. Eastern. But if people are unable to attend that meeting due to conflict or whatever, they can just watch the video. They can send a video of them to share with the, the council. The other part of it in terms of the time commitment is we're just asking people to give whatever kind of 
feedback and comments they want, like what you've already done today has been very valuable. So that's exactly what we're looking for. And then, so there's three different dimensions for, that we're asking contributions for. So that's the first dimension, the time and talents that you just hit on. The second is the finances. So we're asking all users of the system, everybody who's being a part of this to give at least $25 a month, every month into the collective pool of resources. And where we're going with that is as soon as possible, we want 100% of those collective resources from the individuals to go to all the solutions. So again, your $50 a month, if you're giving $100 a month, goes to climate, it goes to those climate solutions. The operational overhead that we you know, have to deal with in terms of technology development and staffing and legal and all those sorts of things, we want that to be paid for as quickly as possible by business contracts and by corporate support. And we feel like we have a very attractive you know, prospect for corporate support because as you know, corporations want to be socially conscious. They want to be on the cutting edge of consciousness. But as you know, almost every single issue that any corporation can choose has an other side of it, right? Every way that they're trying to be social, socially conscious, there's usually another side of people that are going to be upset about what they're doing and you know, backlash. So what we're able to do with the, the system is give them a way of saying, we support this system. We support you know, all these ways that society is being able to address these challenges through the framework without getting attached to any particular issue or solution. So that's how we are going to you know, frame it for the corporations, the leading international corporations that are going to you know, give tens of millions of dollars every year to help build this out. That's where our operations money will come from. The individuals will be directly to the solutions. Of course, right now, 100% of what we're collecting is going into operations until we get there. So that's kind of the framework right now. And the commitment we're asking the leadership council you know to demonstrate all of this is a hundred dollars a month for three months so it's just a three-month commitment that we're asking for from the leadership council we figure things are going to evolve enough over the next three months whether we develop a DAO or whatever it looks like that we're just doing this game for three months and then we see where we're at after three months so if that's the commitment is three hundred dollars up front in terms of the finances and then the last is the relationship capital so it's those three dimensions it's finances, time and talents, and relationship capital. With relationship capital, we're just asking for people on the leadership council to introduce us to at least five people a month. Like you're, hey, Jared, you should talk to this person and here's somebody you should meet. I mean, for you, it's nothing. So five people a month. And then also, you know, posting at least twice a month into some social media and also email blasts that those people have access to, to help, you know, share this with the world. So those are the minimum expectations that we're asking in each of those three dimensions for the leadership council members to just be modeling, you know, what it looks like to come together collectively and create solutions together and, and show the rest of the world like this can work and let's do this. Okay. So obviously there's a lot more details, but you know, you, you ask me questions, give me whatever is there for you and you know, I can share whatever other details or whatever, whatever is there for you. So what's the value? proposition where's the win for the leader councilship what do they get out of being a participating member yeah the biggest thing to me and you know um, we're looking at different levels and i'm open to hearing ways that it can even be more valuable for you but really at the core i'm looking for the 50 people that want to work together to be the first ones to create this new world within this new framework within this new paradigm because this will and you'll see as you see the details of the breakthrough systems that i'm bringing to the table some version of this some evolved version will be the whole system that we're operating under as a society in years to come because i'm basically jumping us ahead decades or even hundreds of years and you know our normal evolution and just saying hey we have to evolve right now because we're about to die. You know, ecosystems on the planet are getting wiped out. Like we don't have time for a slow evolution at this point. We have to pack evolution in a short amount of time. So basically you get to forever be known as one of the people leading that into the world. You get to be on, you know, late night talk shows and news programs in the coming months talking about the NFT part of this or whatever ways you want to be a part of it. And that you're, you know, you're being the leader that's leading us leading the whole society in that way around this. You get what I'm saying? That you're one of the key people bringing what you want to bring to the world through this vehicle. You have any visuals, like user interface uh, looks? Not, not much. We're at such early stages with that. I'm just starting to redo our website. I've got some very like rudimentary um, videos 
Like I'll show you just so you can get a sense of like how rudimentary it is and where we're at with it. Did you know Facebook changed their uh, name? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not plugged in that much, but I, I did catch that. And I was going to ask you, so, you know, with the VR, is it, is the whole thing, like, is the metaverse, you know, part of all of that or it's, or whether what they're doing is not necessarily the whole breakthrough stuff you're telling me about? Well, Facebook bought Oculus. Right. This was like years in the making, but using VR is the new way to use the internet. Like, you're no longer tethered to a display. You're now fully immersed and education is no longer just a static video on a screen, but it's really emotional with gestures and communication at a level that you can't experience on a screen. That yeah, makes. that's really great because I've been envisioning that for many years. So this is just one video I created like a couple months yeah, but this is even outdated, but it just shows you kind of where I was at in terms of, you know, the way that I was showing people. And I was using this, um, this idea of um, Choose Intelligence. I bought chooseintelligence.com as a kind of a branding way for people to be able to, you know, make a distinction between where we've been at and, you know, an intelligent way. These are just like the hand-drawn like visuals I created to be able to do, you know, this presentation. So this is pretty much the extent of where we've gone with it to this point. But again, it's only been in the last few weeks that I've even been unveiling these concepts. So that's why we're so early in the communications around them, as I was keeping all of this behind the scenes for all of these years, you know? So this is just a dumb quiet, like this is how my brain works. I'm gonna start with an example. I went to New York City with my cell phone and I walked up to people and just said, yo, why should people care about NFTs? And I didn't know whether they knew what it is or not, right? Yeah, and I got maybe a hundred people who gave us a reply, right? So do you believe that the people outside of your circle even know that we're in a position where the world needs to be changed? Where were what did you say? Where the world needs to be changed. Like yeah, that's the thing is, I think it is a very small percentage of people right now that has this awareness that, that we're in an urgent situation. And, you know, you see them when you see protests about anything, right? But then when those protests are over, where does that energy go and what gets done, right? And that's the thing is we don't have a structure to contain all of that energy. So it really doesn't need a lot of people. Any issue can have a thousand people, 10,000 people across the country working on it. That's like 0.001% of the population. But now they can find each other. We're actually doing it through channels. So that's kind of the very simple, very intuitive way, like the Discord channels, basically. And so I'm, it's, it sounds like Discord is doing exactly what we're talking about, which is you tune into the channel, you find all the people, all the nonprofits or the businesses, all the everybody, the experts that are gathered around a certain topic. Now you can all say what your resource pool is. Now you can define a collective strategic solution. This is around taking actions around whatever you know people care about, right? So again, we're launching this around issues because issues need to be dealt with. That's my personal passion. However, the system allows any kind of pet project or personal project to use the framework to be able to develop and implement solutions. So we're building out this framework and we're using the students to be able to test it, modify it, implement it, really anybody. And we're open sourcing to the whole world. And that's what we're doing is we're saying, anybody in the world that cares about anything that they see here can just you know, start building out the channel and start connecting with others and start creating. So it really doesn't need a lot of people. It just needs a handful of people and organizations to get started to create results. And then it snows, snowballs into itself. So here's another example that I saw this morning. There was an outbreak at Ebola somewhere in Africa. Yeah. You're in a fully immersed 360 camera experience being narrated of watching what that virus did to these people who are living in Africa. Now for me, 
it brought me back to when I was in Sierra Leone, West Africa, working with the kids and seeing the arms and hands cut off and like seeing that environment where a first world nation group of people would never be able to experience that. So possibly what I'm seeing now with this VR is orientation and onboarding is so simplified where it's like, click this button and reveal this information. And you're indoctrinating them through a process because they don't have any other distractions. It's only what you put in front of them. So by creating content that's fully immersive of traveling around the planet to really show. And, and another thing we were playing with about an hour ago was Google Earth with VR. So now you're using these controllers and you're moving around the world and you're able to interact and fly and zoom in like way cooler than a fucking monitor. You know what I mean? Like, no yeah. way are you from here. You're like, like I'm super in. But like, I, I got married in Bulgaria and I was able to go and fly over the church and everything else. And it's just like, wow. You know, like, not that you are going to compare it to this, but imagine if you had like God's eyes and you're able to see over the terrain. And like when we were in New York City, they had uh, automatic semi trucks that are driving through artificial intelligence cameras. And then they have somebody with the VR goggles that are like able to zoom into the planet. They're like, oh, we have a traffic jam. Let's reroute the truck this way. Like, dude, I see all this stuff in the future, man. Like, that's dude, what I have is like, I, I have to tell you, someday I'm going to break out the pads because I took a, I took a vision quest to Utah back in 1992 or 93. I think it was 92. So in 92, I went into the desert in Utah for 10 days by myself. I was just camping. I wasn't talking to anybody. I was just writing in my notepad and hiking for hours and miles every day. And I was standing up on top of a mountain that, you know, very few people had ever been on the top of because it took me, it was difficult to climb to the top of it. And I'm at the top of the mountain, you know, this is before digital cameras even. So I have my film camera and I'm taking, you know, pictures all over. And I'm, you know, I used to take pictures, you know, like end to end to end so you could string them out across the table and see like the whole view. So I'm doing it like in all directions so that you can see the full like spherical view. And I'm thinking to myself, because VR was just like blocks back then, you know, again, early 90s technology, we didn't have the, the internet yet even, you know. So, you know, this was, I was like visualizing in my head everything you're describing. And I actually got back and was trying to get into the VR field back then. So this is literally 30 years ago, 30 years ago, I was seeing all that you're describing. And what I realized within like a few months of me like being in it was that we were so far from this reality that I wasn't going to be the one that was going to pursue it for 30 years. So I was just going to wait until it caught up to my vision of it. And now, you know, now we're here. So I totally get it. I totally get it on the deepest level. I had the same experience. The whole world, we're seeing stuff in increments of 10 years in the future. And now we're at a point where the world's going to switch like this for the rest of the world. And you're going to be like, what the hell happened? Meanwhile, we were just like, just waiting. Totally, totally. Listen, I, I, I know there's so many more details of what you're doing for you to share with me. I feel like I've been in a resonant frequency with you enough, enough different times. We've come back together and we've felt the resonant enough, resonance enough times that I feel like you're one of the people I would like to be creating this with in the world, you know, and that's why I'm being really direct. Like there's, there's not a lot of people I'm being so specific. Like I want you to be one of the first 50. However, I think you, and especially in the place that you're at with NFTs and everything you're sharing right now, because all the content, and this is why I wanted to record this because all of this video will go on your profile page on, you know, on the website. And now as people come to the website and especially, you know, if you're being a leadership council member and people find you that way and they look at this video, now you're directly connecting with everybody. They're going to want to connect with you or sign up for your thing or whatever it shows on the pro on the, your profile page as their next step. So this is how I, you know, want everything that you're describing to be infused into what we're doing with Uniting Fraction, a marriage of your world and what the energy you're holding into this container of the pooled resources that we're collecting, because eventually we'll get to everything. However, like you're saying, you're right at the core of a real important part of the future for us. So I would love for you to be holding that energy within Uniting Fraction right now. 
But one of the biggest things that I've seen as far as challenges, trying to harness the power of all these different, let's call them whack jobs, because they're all from different worlds and they all come together and they don't see eye to eye. And if the room is too big, everybody wants to be heard and nothing gets done. So sometimes you have to create some sort of pods of people, three to five people, which actually gets work done. Otherwise, it just becomes whose dick is bigger. I totally understand what you're saying. And that's why what I am proposing is that, like, you just propose a solution, right? Pods of people. And then there are other organizational experts that have, you know, some special solution they've been implementing for decades. And then another one that has another solution they've been implementing for decades. And these solutions come in not, and this is why again with the DAO, to me, it's going to be like a weighted voting system or something along those lines. Cause we are having these experts that are really helping set the course. I'm really focused on that. Cause again, I've been working with in the university community for the last you know, year. And so I'm really tuned in to, you know the fact that there's all these researchers that you know, do all these peer reviewed research papers and all the technology and innovators behind the DAO and all the people that created all of that, those are the people to be helping to decide all of this, right? There are world class experts that have been doing this much more than you and I. You and I hear about it, but let's get those people and let's have them create a result. One of the ways that it could work is I, I don't know if you ever played a video game, but they have something called experience points. Mm -hmm. So as you do tasks, you give them tokens that are not refer yep. like non-transferable. Yep. And those equate to how much power your vote is based on how much you put into the system. Exactly. You're totally on board. You're 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 seeing it exactly what we're doing. We're going to create all of these reliability indexes and participation indexes and gamify everything and have analytics for everything. You're absolutely right. That's the way we're scaling it all is by having all of those algorithms that, you know, do everything. So it's not like, you know, we're, we're taking the human aspect out of it as much as possible. Right. And then you get all the voting and you get the voting amongst the experts. And like you're saying, experts have certain, you know, value because of whatever, all the reputation points, whatever it is. So yes, you're totally on the money with how I'm visualizing this. And then again, essentially what we're doing is like, okay, now that we're creating this framework, you and I are describing in words, I'm going to, you know, again, let's say that you decide to join the leadership council and now you have this profile page and here's the video. And then it's tagged with NFTs and it's tagged with DAOs and it's tagged with all these different things, Bitcoin, blockchain, all these different things. And so now, you know, a, an intern at, let's say, Harvard Business School is interested in, you know, doing a thesis around what you're talking about. And they decide, hey, here is an organization that I can actually work within to be able to reach out to the experts. I'm going to be the one that's going to, you know, do this research paper on, you know, what is the best solution of, you know, people coming together, whatever it looks like. And now we have, you know, professors involved, experts involved, the thesis, you know, all that sort of stuff. So again, it's, it's all of this work is being done out in the world. That's the thing is people are doing all of this work all the time. It's just that you and I aren't tapped into it in real time. So now we're creating a framework where we're all connected together so that all that work that's getting done is informing the system itself to actually have the results of the system be built in alignment with what our, you know, best practices are as a society right now. Right, so it's really a best practices, you know, development system and implementation system. I get it. I have these conversations almost daily with the people on Clubhouse. So awesome. The the only thing is, is time for me like doesn't exist anymore because we've been growing and expanding and pushing and promoting and doing everything. Um, one of the things as we were speaking, and this is going to sound completely ludicrous. But I don't know how familiar you are with TikTok, mm -hmm. but TikTok's the second biggest app on the downloaded app store. And what you can do with that app is tell the algorithm what type of people you want to follow by removing certain people from your feed of what you participate in. And it kind of learns you. And then when you create content, you're specific with it. And then you're basically using the biggest algorithm right now in 2020, whatever year we're in, to explode that message and collect that group of people in short 30 second formats, a minute, you know, three minutes max. 
So it's, it's perfect. And in the two minutes that you just shared that with me, now that can be pulled out as a separate clip put on your you know, page. And that one clip can have you know, 5 million views in the next two months for people that understand that and start to use this technique. You know, And this is exactly it. I, and I totally get that your time is totally limited. Essentially, you know, you and I will have one or two other conversations like this each month. We can have, you know, one or two of those be the group conversations where, you know, again, people can, that are interested in this part can watch this. You can share for a minute, whatever it looks like. It's just a matter of, of again, the world being built in your, in your mind's eye, essentially. You know, it's that you have this vision of how you want to see the world go, combining everything in your head with, you know, the rest of reality and the 50 of us are coming together to create that reality to begin with. We'll add others, but it, this is the starting point, the first 50 that launch us into these areas. So again, I, I want to address every challenge and obstacle that you have in your head because I, I don't think any of them are, you know, I, I, are insurmountable. So I think, you know, you just tell me what's there for you as what we need to overcome and let's overcome it so we can make this happen. No, like, like as far as bandwidth, right? If, if mm -hmm. we're going to be doing calls and we keep them within a certain time frame, and you're doing it, I mean, it's feasible. Yeah. Well, let's make it work the way you want to. Again, those meetings, you know, are they're meant to provide mutual value, the two meetings a month, right? So if somebody feels like them spending an hour and a half in that meeting is not going to be valuable to them, I don't want to impose that on them, right? You could go ahead and you could watch it at double speed sometime later, you know, whatever. Hmm? What's that? Yeah, exactly. Two to three. Yeah, exactly. So you'll catch it when you catch it. You and I will have meetings like this. We'll have this on the website. We'll start to build a team of interns and a team of other people that are interested in this sort of thing. You'll be able to start to throw out like assignments and like things that ought to get done. You should say, hey, this should happen. And, and you guys do this. And you get to direct the action in this whole world so that, you know, we can be doing what it is that you think I we got are. People, I got people on my team who are better at delegation. Mm -hmm. I'm just a visionary. I don't yeah. know you live the same way. I'm not the guy that's going to be cracking whips. Yeah. And I'm not managing teams. So I, I'm learning now that I'm not a team manager or a team leader, but I'm able to lead the vision and yes. gather people and create the vibrational energy to get everybody attracted to it. Yep. But I'm not that guy that's going to be sitting in those meetings daily and trying to grind out stuff like, I can put input and then I get frustrated and I end up doing most of the work myself because I just get irritated. But like, I, I want shit done yesterday and it doesn't happen yesterday. So I got to wait. I hate waiting. You know how it is. I totally know how it is. And you and I, as you know, are the same in that visionary way. I am not the COO either. You know, I've been playing a CEO for the last you know year because I've had to, but it's not, you know, the ideal position for me. I, I need to have a COO that manages all that stuff. We're going to have that as soon as we can. You and I can keep connecting on the visionary aspect because again, we've created tremendously valuable content already right now. So again, you and I have a couple of a CVO. <laughs> a CVO, Chief Visionary Officer. Yes, you got it. Awesome, bro. Yes. Come and come and be uh come and come and be part of our CVO team. I think we definitely can have a CVO team for sure. Let's do that. I need I need other visionaries to be coming together on the visionary side, and you're holding a really important energy right now. Well, there's another person on my team. His name is Milan. He's working with a program called Self and yep. Mirror Image, which is a photorealistic avatar that becomes your Tamagotchi that tracks all your food intake and everything else, and it watches you, and it gives you the ability to now look and care for something that's not you but it is you and then it tracks your data and it protects you from big big data taking your data and making money off of it but you can at least the data like he can explain it more so i can introduce you to that guy there's a bunch of people in my space that are working with very complex subject matter but they are able to break it down in simplified second grade language terms but the stuff that's being done in the space as far as crypto blockchain and NFTs and DeFi, which is decentralized finance. Like my goal in January was like almost community economics, where 
if you have a group of people who are able to put money into a pool and you have educated people who know how to grow that wealth, now they're using DeFi protocols that they're able to grow this money and then take loans against the money that are paying the basic needs of your actual living expenses. And you're not paying for capital gains tax because you're taking loans on the money. Dude, it's crazy what these guys have figured out, but we're so in an encrypted language and not everybody's able to understand it and or use it. Cause if you don't have $1,500 to just lose to learn, you're not even going to get into the Ethereum blockchain. So now you got Solana, Tezos, Polygon, Matic, are cheaper to interact with because the gas fees are a lot less, but the user, user interface and everything else aren't there yet. So it's like you're you're we're not there yet, but we're getting closer to tools and resources that are gonna make it turnkey and codeless and it's like almost as easy as WordPress for not even WordPress is easy, but you know, Wix or some of these other things where you could just plug and play. Yeah. But but the world's gonna change and and we can't even predict where we're going to be in the next five to 10 years based on all the stuff that's happening around us. I totally feel you, bro. I feel you. And I'm so excited that you're, that you're sharing all of this and that you're bringing all of this and that you're camped out in this space. I'm not surprised. This seems like the space that you would gravitate towards. So I'm psyched that you're there and um, I'm going to have another meeting in 10 minutes. So I want to, you know, make sure that we're getting to, you know, a clear point of where do we go next from here? Are you feeling that this is a good match between us and that this is something that you want to help co-create? Because again, to me, it seems very synergistic right now. And, you know, if there's anything else you need to make it, you know, worth it for you, let's sort that out and make it worth it. This, this is just what we're already doing. So as far as us co-collaborating or whatever, it's pretty much in alignment with what I'm already doing. Now with the Oculus and the VR and stuff, it's like taking... The, the digital assets that we're creating and now bringing it into a new world and then collaborating on a whole nother level and stuff like that. So like, I'm going to introduce some things with you. Um, like Clubhouse, if, if you're interested in inviting some of these people to just come and listen and participate, the, the rooms run daily for 10, 20 hours a day. So there's constant evolution now i'm doing the tiktoks now i'm doing you know all these other lives and everything else so like there's a massive amount of content and once you start getting this thing promoted properly we can you know share that knowledge with our audience and see who's in our but we have a whole nonprofit um set up so we are a 501c3 already and awesome. awesome. the process of becoming a dow we um which is a, a wyoming legal structure but um Great. It's just, it took a long time to understand everything. And now it's just like, we're, we're building an academy next, which is might be something else that you're going to have to focus on is educating people through micro information, bite-sized pieces that are easy to do. The, the other word you use, which was gamification is like super powerful. And when you can understand these new topics called play to earn, so there's a, there's a game called Axie Infinity where the Philippines are actually adopting this game to the point where they are no longer working real jobs and making more money playing this game. Like that's life changing, you know? Yeah, that's, I, I've been visualizing that for a long time. So we're definitely gonna incorporate all those different elements, all those different aspects, all those different best practices of how we use technology to, to incentivize the type of things that we need done, which is coming together, working together collectively, collaboratively to deal with these things. You know, we, we have the ability to connect these dots between the types of processes you're describing that are cutting edge, they're engaging, people want to do them, they're inspired, they're energized around these things. And we can make that result, clean up the oceans and clean up the water and, you know, have us survive, you know, so that's awesome. And that's what there is for us to do, right? It's to connect those dots. So I think, you know, like you said, it's a total natural fit. You know, we can, again, in those three areas, I know you'll give me gobs of, of you know, relationship connections. So it's not even a question about that. You know, the time, I think we can work out like we were just talking about and valuable meetings and that sort of thing. So as long as, you know, the financial part works for you, let's do this. Let's have you be on the leadership council. Let's create your profile page immediately with this information on it. And let's start 
leveraging what we're doing to, you know, to work for you and vice versa and like blow it up. Yeah, and another thing we could do is I could host a room where you're the other moderator in Clubhouse and then we could just introduce concepts and questions and you can like, we'll create a forum and migrate people from that room to a call to action to get your data. And then you have a mailing list built around this. We got people who are already interested in clean water. We have teams of people working in Hawaii already doing stuff like, awesome. I already know who to talk to, who to introduce you to. It's just a matter of finding the time to do it. Yeah, I totally get that. So we'll we'll keep being in that flow. I really appreciate your resonance. I'm excited that you and I are going to do this. I think, you know, you and I have talked a lot, you know, in the past about how we could really work together. It seems like now is our time to really be working together to create some real results in the world. So I'm super excited about that. Me too. Awesome. Awesome, bro. High five. Way to go. Dude, this is so ridiculous go into vr you can make sound effects you can do things you can show things it's going to change we, will, we, we, we are we're going to get there you just launched us into vr today now it's just a matter of time so i'm super excited for that dude, awesome. I, I was on the call there's seven guys all in vr and they're like dude you need to get an oculus i literally jumped in the car grabbed the costco card and in 15 minutes was plugging in charging up ready to go and i didn't sleep for almost 36 hours so how long ago was that? 36 hours ago. So you're just you're just new to Oculus too? You're just getting into I the just it. I just unplugged. I told everybody you're, you're, I have to go right now because I got a meeting. I know you're you're you're, you're talking it up so much. I thought you've been into it for months, like you've been camped out. I didn't realize this is your whole oh. brand new thing. All right, boom, it just Here's exploded. The Here's the boxes. I got them all right here. The places That's amazing. Nice. So, all right, so so you aren't that far ahead of me. I'm glad to know. I can catch up. I, I spent last year before NFTs learning about Blender, Unreal Engine, Unity, 3D Max Pro, and experimenting with all the different things. I created a virtual exhibition so mm -hmm. people can go in, but the pixel streaming was so expensive that when I brought it to clients, they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't have that kind of money. Not, not for this. So I, I got really, really sad because I didn't have ability to birth it. And then three or four weeks later, I learned about NFTs and my knowledge and understanding around everything I was doing. There's a lot of 3d art. There's a lot of stuff that's happening. So it's not like I never had a headset, but I've been around this for two, three years now. And my mind is now just like plugging in, and actually interacting with it. And my wife is an educator and she's like, oh, what are you doing with that? And I'm like, listen, try it. And she's like, wow, this is really cool. So once you like break past this barrier and you understand that these big money companies like Facebook and Microsoft and everything else are gonna be doing the massive data collection and they're putting billions of dollars and breaking the price. They're losing money on the, the software, uh, on the hardware because they wanna do this mega harvest of data. I totally get that. I totally get that. Stock of their life. They're gonna live in Ready Player One. <laughs> I totally get that. Let me just text my next meeting so that you and I can wrap up here because I get that we're almost done. But I want to make sure he doesn't jump in. No worries. It's gonna be a wild future. It is for sure. And then you got Apple producing that augmented reality. We got metaverses where you can buy digital assets and then produce your content. And develop lands in the, the 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 metaverse so we have super world we're working with where they actually have parcels of google earth and you're buying a piece of actual physical land that you can develop augmented reality and stuff on he's coming in anyway even yeah more. i know hey rich how are you very good how are you how about yourself I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So great to connect. I'm sorry. I was just texting you because Alexander wow. and I are just wrapping up. We're only going to be like a couple more minutes. So okay. can I text you in a couple minutes when we're done? Sure. Yep. Okay, no cool. Problem. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. Great to see you. See you in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel you, bro. It's 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 exciting, and it's exciting that you're you're the one introducing this whole world to us. I'm really excited to post this video, share it with all the you know all the interns, all the rest of the leadership council. This is good did stuff. Know, did you know Anthony Fino? Yeah, I mean, I introduced you to Anthony if you remember back in New York. That was that. Remember, so you know Shuri. Shuri. 
I'm not sure. So who is Shuri? Shri. Um, Shri. Oh, Shri Kala? Yeah. Yes, I know Shri Kala. Yes. So he's coming to our room. Anthony's coming to our room. Shri started interacting with the space, started working with NFTs, wrapped his mind around it. He's working with some of my closest peers. So like... That's awesome. I sent I sent Shri a uh, uh, you know message a little while ago. I haven't heard back from him. I haven't followed up with him yet. I heard he's about to have a baby. I connected with Aloka. Do you remember Aloka? He and Shri were the ones creating Unitribe in New York. Remember when we did all the interviews of everybody in Unitribe? So yes, yes. I'm I'm about to connect with Shri. So thank you for mentioning it again. So yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not like just because you haven't been in the space, the spiritual energies and all the things have been consistently overlapping and layering and it was just funny because Shri wrote one of my peers a text about this money mantra and how to like do this and that was the day that EMS decided to gift 500 million dollars to the early supporters and they airdropped thousands 50,000 20,000 10,000 units depending on when you got into this it's basically a domain name for your wallet address and the world was blessed with $500 million. So like, it's just wild that that moment that he wrote that text and felt this experience is now directly connected to this moment in my world. So it's just cool. That is super cool. That is super cool. I'm super glad to hear that you're connecting with Shri and Anthony. So Anthony's also being a part of what you're up to. You guys are connecting. So Anthony's been in the room since maybe March, April, I got him on Clubhouse. He started doing the cannabis thing. Uh, cannabis is now overlaying with a lot of the stuff we're doing. Uh, nice. A lot of the people who've been in my life for the last 30 years have been this infinity sign where we're just constantly coming in and out of each other's lives because yeah. of a specific reason. And the reason was NFTs. Like, if you're not learning about this technology, you're going to be using it just like you use a light switch and you're not even going to know it but the people who learn about it now and start to implement it are, are going to be in like generational wealth and and money that like insane i i bought a freaking thing called a board eight it's a board eight yacht club for like fifteen hundred dollars now they're worth over two hundred thousand dollars each amazing just to, give you, just to give you an idea of like the amount of money that's moving around this space and it's only one percent saturation of the world so Amazing. when the rest of the world's money's moving into it, who, who knows what's happening next? I feel you, bro. Very exciting. Very exciting to have this conversation with you. And um, so welcome to being, uh, you know, part of the Leadership Council. I really appreciate you being on board and, you know, us sharing this journey together. Super exciting, man. All right, man. Well, you got a lot of meetings to do, so we'll let you go, but we'll catch up soon. We will. We will. This has been great. I'll, I'll share the video with you and we'll, uh, we will continue. All right. Keep smiling. All right. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Be great. Talk to you soon. Ciao. Bye.